Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Jeremy Doran, and he is better leadership through better communication. He's got a wealth of background and knowledge to share with the audience. He's also a podcast host, How to Talk to Weirdos, which is kind of an interesting title. And um, today's topic is going to be all about conversations and how to be more effective. So Jeremy, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, um, I know we, I love um, getting just people from different perspectives into the business realm for the audience. So kind of share your story and background and how you came to be doing what you're doing. Well, it depends on how much time you have, but I went to school for engineering and psychology, and that got me some interviews just because people were wondering who is this weird guy who does both of those. Um and I worked in corporate America for about 10 years. I did a lot of helping people develop strategies. I was lucky enough to get to live in Italy and travel around Europe. That was wonderful. Um, and then I've been doing leadership training and coaching for about the last 15 years. A lot of the value that I have in leadership training is that I've got a very diverse background. So I've got kind of the engineering process mind and the psychology softer um, type skills. I've been overseas. I've owned my own small business, worked in a large business. So I've got a, a little bit of perspective on most situations. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, it's quite a uh, fascinating story. And I found like the, some, the, some of the best communicators, they've just had a variety of experience, you know, either through travel or through work and kind of learn how to, you know, different cultures, different points of view, how to talk to people. Um, so you know, kind of delving into it. And one thing is, um, you know, bridging worlds. And you've got a interesting thing. You've got a background in mechanical engineering, psychology, and how do you leverage these two opposite fields to enhance coaching leadership training in the STEM field? Yeah, a, a lot of the leadership training I've done happens to be for engineers who have gotten promoted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most engineers, not all, um, have a challenge communicating with the rest of the world. And then they become engineers and they need to develop all these soft skills and they need to start dealing with people in different divisions. And they may need to start dealing with, you know, investors. And so there, there's ways that they can understand how different people communicate. And it's not just an issue for engineers. Everybody has trouble communicating because we all assume other people are like us and they rarely are. You know, which brings me to my... Next question is, um, you know, because I did a lot of consulting work too, and it was just kind of how do you reach the client, even though, you know, you may have all the technical knowledge, but if you can't communicate that and the client can't understand it, you're just kind of no better off than someone who who doesn't know it, know the material. So um, my next question is, you know, mastery in communication, and you focus on improving communication with people with different backgrounds, people coming from different uh, experiences and kind of share a case where effective communication significantly impacted your relationship. Well, I'll tell you just in my personal relationship, uh, to give you a little more background on me, people never really made sense to me growing up. <laughs> so that's why I spend so much time thinking and talking about communication because I've had to pay attention to it. People never really made sense. And it got me to realize just how many assumptions we all make when people talk and they write an email, they've got a tone of voice in their head. And when someone's reading that email, they have a tone of voice in their head, but the tones of voice might not match at all. So what might seem like it's a well-intended email might be received as something really harsh. So just understanding that you have to be really careful about your assumptions. I've gotten some work emails where I looked at them. My initial reaction was, oh no, here we go. This is trouble. And then I just stop and think about it. And I think about how else it could be interpreted. And then I just go back and ask the question. So what I've found is when you're not 100% sure asking the question, resolve so many issues that don't need to be issues yeah it's 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 interesting how much um because uh i learned this in uh during my training is how much can be misconstrued over emails and text and um you know different assumptions and 
And uh, because you can't see or feel or hear the emotions, it's just the words. So what you well intended and, you know, somebody can take it the wrong way and you you never, (laughs) that was never your intention. So Yeah. (laughs) And Um, then once it starts, if it started over email, (laughs) it's never going to get resolved over email because (laughs) it's just going to keep going sideways and God forbid text. Once you misunder, misinterpret something over text where there's, there's not even grammar in full sentences, boy, you, you don't resolve it. When that starts happening and you feel it, you really need to pick up the phone or walk over to the person. Yeah. The other thing that um, I've, I've read is um, I came across this book called, um, you know, Difficult Conversations and um, mm-hmm. kind of, and it's very useful in negotiations. And I think um, you, people like the FBI and they use it in, you know, hostage situation, you know, high emotion, high stakes, um, very emotional. So kind of talk about difficult conversations, entering into those, whether some people that I know, they just stay out of it. They just like to stay out of it. Um, kind of talk about that navigating difficult conversations. Yeah. The just avoiding them doesn't work. Um, <laughs> I, I've, been married, am no longer married. And in that marriage, we would kind of ignore things. And we knew that we could avoid them and we would just avoid them and they never got resolved. And in my current relationship, we, as unpleasant as it sometimes is, we'll just address what is going on and then work through it. But what the biggest piece of advice I would give people is on those difficult conversations, don't have them spur the moment. If someone does something that's going to require a pretty in-depth arg- or discussion, take your time and come back to it when you're not emotionally triggered. Yeah. That's, I love that. Taking the pause and like, just take for a walk, you know, you know, get some fresh air when you're in a good state of mind, then you can talk in a, you know, very civilized and otherwise, you know, it just, you know, goes into a screaming, shouting match. Yeah. And if you can kind of separate yourself from it and then come back, you can approach it from a, here's what our issue is and what can we do to resolve it? Whereas if you just respond right away with some sort of pointing finger and you always do this, then that's never going to go well. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, Kind of talk about the future of leadership and kind of You know, especially in today's world, it's very chaotic and dynamic and changing. And a lot of people are just starting their companies and they they don't want to work for traditional. Uh, What are critical skills future leaders in the STEM fields need to develop to succeed? I think it always comes back to active listening and asking questions and not making assumptions. So many people are now of different generations and people talk about Gen X or Gen Y, and you see them actually rolling their eyes like, oh, those Gen X people don't know, blah, blah, blah. But every generation has their own issues. They're just different. And so if you approach it as, you know, kids these days never want to do such and such, then that communication is not going to go well. If you can just stop and check in with people and actively listen without making assumptions, it it goes so far to helping everyone be more engaged and more productive. Yeah. Um, there's a generational gap, you know, boomers are still, you know, uh, in the workforce and you got Gen X and you got millennials and millennials and Gen Z, they are really shaping the way we work and communicate. They're shaping the culture, um, which is really interesting. How do you incorporate skills into your coaching and, you know, um, clients? And also you talk a lot about these during your speaking engagements. I'm not sure I understand the question, so I'm going to interpret it however I want. How's that? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Going, extending on the topic of asking questions is just being open-minded. The thing that got you where you are is not necessarily the thing that will get you to the next place. And I see so many people be successful in their jobs and they get promoted to management. And then some younger, less experienced person has this idea and they're just close to it. And the immediate answer is no, without really stopping to think of if it's a better thing. You, you see it with kids, parents with kids, if they're not careful, when a kid asks for something, the answer is no, 
stop doing that. No, no, no. And it's just a habit. But if you can stop and think, you know, when you're in a corporation and some new person comes up with what seems like a wacky idea, that wacky idea may be the best thing ever. So remembering to stay open to ideas is pretty crucial, whether it's from a younger person or someone from a different department who just has a different point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, well, kind of coming to the end and there's, two, you know, two more questions I have is, um, you know, I want to talk to you about your podcast, but one thing is talking about is a fear and, you know, part of everybody's journey is this fear and you help people overcome that. So kind of share your personal fear you've conquered in your career and what strategies you used to overcome and how you help clients. So my favorite story is I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> and when my daughter was five, we were at a club med that had a trapeze school and we'd walk by the trapeze and they would say for days, Hey, do you want to try the trapeze? My answer was no way. I'm not doing that. Then they got smart and they asked her, they said, Hey, little girl, would you like to do the trapeze? And she said, yes. <laughs> so right as she was about to go, she started crying <laughs> and I said, what's wrong? She said, will you go first? I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> and what I realized in that moment is when people have fears, there are dangers of doing a thing and not doing a thing. So to me, the fear was the danger of climbing this 25 foot ladder and swinging through space and falling and breaking myself in half. But then I realized the other fear is letting my daughter down, not teaching her how to confront her fears and overcome them. And I realized that I was more afraid of that than I was of climbing that ladder. So when people are making business decisions, they may be afraid of making a leap. And I'll always get them to think about what are the dangers if you don't leap and then balance them. And thinking about the danger of not doing something will often help you realize it's worth actually trying this risky thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So you've talked about, um, you know, you, your podcast, which is interesting is, um, talking about, um, how to talk to weirdos. I'm just curious, the, gen the, the genesis of that name, you know, what inspired you to start this podcast? How has it evolved and how can people find you and, you know, check out the work that you do? Yeah. I'm actually thinking of changing the name just because the term weirdo turns some people off. <laughs> um, but it's really so many people are in some way neurodivergent. And when you're talking to someone who's on a different side of the bell curve than you, they seem like a weirdo because the way they think and process is so different. Um, so that was how that came about. An easy way to find me is my webpage, which is jeremydornspeaks.com. And you can find me on LinkedIn or a few other places. But if you look up Jeremy Doran Speaks, that's the easiest way to find me. So the web page is, or the podcast is currently how to talk to weirdos. Um, and we're in discussions about what the name ought to be next. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. I'm also renaming, you know, my podcast was, you know, financial freedom for physicians. And then it became financial freedom podcast because I have guests, business guests, and, you know, you know, a variety of audiences in expanding. So all of Jeremy's resources will be in the links and show notes and be sure to give him a like and follow as well as check out his podcast and with that thanks so much for a very inspiring conversation thank you it's been wonderful being here